This is the smallest house that you can build in Minecraft. And here's how to make autumn trees that change color with the seasons. And this is every unexpected Minecraft build hack you need to use. And hey, according to YouTube, it's physically impossible to subscribe to the channel in less than a second. So if you're up to the challenge, let's put one second on the clock so you can prove them wrong. Ready, go. And hey, even if you subscribed after a second, thank you, it all helps out a ton. Shulkers render like entities, which means that if you get far enough away, they'll just completely disappear before the blocks do. And while that would seem like it would make them terrible to build with, the truth's actually anything but. Since if we take after this example, you can actually see that by using shulkers in certain patterns like this, then we can actually add shadows into our build. Now I'll fully admit, from up close, this looks hideous in this example, but as you step far enough away and you have this in the background, it really is something special. Looking more like a red rendered image than anything that was supposed to happen in Minecraft. Just make sure they have some barriers separating the viewers. You don't want them getting too close and revealing how the sausage gets made. While we didn't get the tough golem in 1.21, the new tough blocks are great ways to add trims to your wooden walls. Especially pairing this with stripped dark oak as you can see in this example, you get some really pretty results. And honestly, if I was Anasite, I'd be worried seeing this. Now, in theory, using drip leaf as a desk would be a pretty lousy concept. But taking a look at this, I'm reconsidering. By just putting a slab with a sign in front of it, then we've got a simple stool in front of our simple desk. Add a flower pot on top, it looks pretty nice. And if you don't want it to fall over, just power it with redstone, and that drip leaf's never gonna crash. Pretty cool. By mixing together a grindstone with the new crafter block, then if we look at the front here, we have what looks to be a face of a robot riding on a wheel. Add in some levers for arms like this example, or put it on top for an antenna. There's really a lot that you can do here. I mean, if you've seen the movie WALL-E, just think of any of those, and you can probably make it with the crafter. Nether brick usually isn't a safe block. I mean, when you see it, you're at a fortress. That's not usually a good thing. But here it seems pretty positive. With a mix of stairs and slabs like this, it is possible to make yourself an actual paw print symbol for your next base. So whether you're putting this on a giant flag or just to mark where you left your dogs to sit, I think this does the trick. With the armadillo coming to Minecraft, it's time that we give it something to eat too. And that's what this user thought when they made this termite mound for the armadillo. But I know what you're thinking, we don't exactly have termites in Minecraft. And that's that's why this is so ingenious, because by just using melon seeds inside of an invisible item frame, from far away, they look like the bugs. And I think that's just adorable. You can even rotate them to add extra character. Very nice. Now, when you first see this pattern, it might be hard to decipher what's all going on. But really, by just placing one piston in the center, pistons facing into it on these sides, and then intertwining a bunch of that repeating flower pattern together, we can follow this example and get some really nice looking piston floors. And honestly, I'm amazed with how well the borders line up on the piston face like like this. It kinda hurts your head to stare at for too long, but it's hard to say it's not cool on a floor. Minecraft doesn't have seasons, but the leaves can still change. Since if you're willing to make the new copper grates that we're gonna be finding in 1.21, then we can use these instead of leaves and have ourselves some autumn trees. And if you leave these in place and don't oxidize them, then that orange leaf is gonna change back to more of a greenish color. Telling you it's time for summer, or time to place down some new autumn leaves, if that's what you wanted to keep up. Minecraft's pots can be great for decorating, and no small part of that is the fact that we're able to place anything on top of it and it can overlap with the lip of the jar. Look no further than the lantern's example here. By placing either a sole or regular lantern on top, it'll fit perfectly because of the hitbox, giving you a new way to light up your base. The crafter isn't just good for futuristic robots, it's also good for futuristic doors. And by using the other faces of the block, we can orient it in such a way to get this really special door design. And I particularly love that if you look in the center of these two doors here, it even looks like there's a shadow separating the two of them. That's a really nice touch, especially for something that was never intended to be used this way. By placing one banner up top on your roof and then another banner attached to a sign like this, we can overlay the two and make something of curtains to decorate our rooms. And as this example shows off, if you give these a gradient pattern, that can look really nice to adorn something like an enchanting room. Or just put them to the side of any entrance, and then it looks like you got a privacy screen. I think that's a really nice touch. Minecraft doesn't have any elephants, but this might be the reason why. Since if we take after this user's example, we're able to build all of these animals as trophies to place on our wall. And if you wanted to make this a little less barbaric, you could always just change it in such a way where it's made entirely out of one kind of stone, and then it's a statue instead of a brutality. Whatever keeps Pete off your case is fine by me. As we talked about in previous facts videos, water is able to hydrate crops even if it's just passing through air. So we can use that subtle hydration to be able to make these kind of designs like so. Where our farmlands place the trapdoors lining it, and then we hide the water source under something like this with a moss carpet over top. And then we don't have to worry about dropping our crops into water or dropping ourselves if we happen to step too close to the canal. 
Since armor stands are entities, we can overlap them within the same hitbox. And when you do it, their textures will start to overlap, which wouldn't sound ideal, but here, it's a good thing. And following this user's advice, all we have to do is place down one armor stand in the direction that you want, and put the first of our two colors on top of it. And then, with another one facing the same direction on a blocker trapdoor above it, we put the second color on, drop them into place, and we'll get this two-tone shirt to show off on your shelves. Which I think is pretty sweet. In vanilla Minecraft, there's no way to change your size, but with this dollhouse, you'll think that we did. Since if we flip open this trap door to crawl inside, because of the invisible item frames that we used, we can place specific items to look as if they're placed within the world. And while it might fall apart if you take a closer look, things like the bed and the bookshelf on the wall do look quite nice, giving you a very cute build and a very mild case of claustrophobia. Structured void blocks don't get a lot of love in Minecraft, and really there's not too much that you can do with them. But by putting skulk veins on top of the block, then it's possible to get ourselves what happens to look like a block of skulk leaves. And as you can see by this example of a skulk vine tree, that can look really cool if you build these in the deep dark. By placing down a row of fences like this, with a gate in the middle, and then four levers supported on top of that, then we can use those levers to support for our lanterns. Which, when we then stand at the ground level, you can quickly see to be a beautiful street lamp. Just as long as no one comes by and flips it down. I guess every street lamp looks good until someone vandalizes it. This is nothing new. Since we're able to waterlog stained glass panes, then if we work them into the water like this, we can actually use them as a convincing wake to follow behind your boat. And I particularly love using light blue for the middle and then white ones for the outside. That's a nice touch, and if we're not getting anything like Dr. Rat's coded in the past, this is probably the closest we'll get to the game looking like the trailers that was possible without mods. With all of the faces that we can find on the pots, I mean, there's plenty of shirts to find, you can get pretty creative in the kind of totem poles that you built. And what I like particularly about this example is not just using the pots, but also these other blocks that mesh well with the color design, like the composter near the top and the note block near the bottom. Added some mangrove buttons and it blends really nice. Plus, we can store stuff inside of the pots now, giving you both a totem pole and a piggy bank. Did you know that smoke from a campfire is able to pass through a block? Well, sure enough, that's gonna be the basis for this new grill that we're building. Since with a couple of looms like this, we can lay it out in such a way that it looks like we've got a smoking grill for our outdoor patio. And honestly, when the alternative is building one of these out of a bunch of iron and minecarts, for those of us on a budget, I think this will more than do the trick. These are the rarest blocks to build with in Minecraft, because you can't build with them. But if we take after this user, we might just have a way to incorporate the sun and moon into our designs. And for me personally, I love the creativity here. And the fact that these only show up on the build for a limited amount of time, I think makes it even more special, making it more of a light show than a static statue. Here's why we used a hoglin in our build. If we were to summon in a hoglin using this tag is immune to zombification, then we'll be able to keep it alive long enough to play dead. And then after we add in the dinner bone name tag to it, with some end rods over top laying out horizontally, we get ourselves the perfect pig on a spit illusion that'll be ready for our next Hawaiian luau. Here's how to make a fancy pirate ship without spending all your gold doubloons. Since by tucking in a spruce boat into a mix of trap doors and stairs like this user does, we can make a very convincing little boat to put in your shipyard. And not to mention the fact that by using an actual boat inside, we can still get in and ride the boat as usual. Though where we ride it to won't be that far. But that's still a lot more functional than most build hacks, so I'll let it slide. In the nether, you'll find warp trees, and now the dead warp tree. And the way that we made this is by mixing together muddy mangrove roots for the stem, and then dead coral blocks for the leaves above. And while that's cool enough, I love the idea of putting hanging roots underneath the blocks to look like dead warped vines. And really, this just makes me want to see a whole dead forest made out of these. They look that good. If you just put two big drip leaf plants facing into each other, then their texture merges so perfectly that we got ourselves our very own drip leaf bench, which I think is a perfect addition for any park that you put this in. But if you're worried about those drip leaves falling down as soon as you sit on them, don't worry, because with a couple of redstone torches underneath, we have a survival friendly way to make sure that these don't fall. No animals were harmed in the making of this hack, but it sure looks like they were. Because even though there's no moose that are in Minecraft, by using just a simple stair and some closed fence gates, we can make it look as if we mounted the mob's head right on top of our wall. And that way, we'll be able to take after Gaston and start to use antlers in all your decorating. You probably don't think about using levers for building, but after seeing this, you'll reconsider. Since just two levers and a cobblestone wall, we can get a nice piece of detail for your next wall. And really, as this example shows, you could tuck a whole bunch of things inside the middle of these two levers and have it look pretty cool. And personally, I'd like to take after this comment on the post and make one of these with an amethyst crystal. That would be particularly cool to see. And plus, it would serve as a light source. By just using a couple of stone slabs and stairs, we can redesign our mind to look so much better. And now, these different layers of depth actually make it look as if someone mined there, instead of just leaving a smooth wall of ores and rocks. And while there's no way to make ore slabs in the game, if you cover them up just right using plain 
stone, you can at least make pretend that there is. And I think that's much better than what we had before. When banners do their swaying animation, they clip within certain blocks, which seems like a glitch, but we're gonna use it as a feature. With trapdoors in this banner pattern, we can make it look as if this face is actually blinking, or at the very least, checking its surroundings before it goes back to sleep. With just a tripwire hook and some trap doors, we can add a convincing tree tap to your tapped trees. And from that point, it's up to you to choose what kind of sap you're collecting from the tree. Whether that's using a honey block next to a birch tree for tree sap, or a redstone block with a crimson tree to look a bit more sinister. And for such a simple idea to pull off, this really is creative, and it won't take up much space either. So if you can't go through all the effort to build a custom tree, at least you can make a bone meal tree look a bit more custom with one of these. Look at how much of a difference we have between this leaf block and this one here. And the only thing that we added in to make that was a couple of vines like so. And to me, it's so amazing how far we can go with such a simple design. Though I must mention that if you plan on adding this, you might want to invest in some string as well. That way you can limit how far the vines actually grow and make sure that your new plant doesn't get out of hand. Don't let your candle on fire, but instead you might want to try this. See, by adding in unlit gray candles to the top of our iron fence, we had the perfect detail in for our metal bars. And what's even better in my eyes is that the wick out the top even kind of looks like barbed wire poking out. A nice touch. Normally we do our cooking in a furnace, but how about a pot? Since, as we'll see here, by just putting a cauldron full of water on top of a campfire, the smoke's still able to pass through the top. And then, with a couple of fence gates pointing into it, and some armor stands locked into place like so, this looks like the perfect place to cook up your meal. And what's even better about it is that we can still interact with the campfire underneath. So if you really wanted to, just place down your meat, and you'll still get the food cooked all the same, just with a lot more visual splendor. Instead of stairs, here's why you should use walls. Since when you're trying to get a slope in your build, whether that's for a roof or something else, you'll notice that walls made of the same block are capable of making a smoother yet steep slope that you can show off in your build. And if you don't have a stone cutter, these do end up being cheaper than using stair blocks as well. And in my eyes, that's a win on both fronts. Instead of using dripstone for your traps, let's use it for walls instead. By using the different heights of the spikes, we can make a much more menacing fence around your base. And to me, this starts to look like the kind of pointy wood walls that you'd see in something like Clash of Clans, making this an even better fit for your early game rural base. Here's how to make your bamboo farm look 10 times better. Since with the help of the debug stick, we can add in these different leaves to your bamboo stalks and essentially make them into a whole new plant. And then by adding in fences on the side and iron chains above, we've got ourselves a new farm to put on display. And honestly, with how fast bamboo grows anyway, it might be nice to have the chains so that the rest of it doesn't get messed up as soon as they grow. If we place down two spruce trapdoors like so, and then add in chains over top, we have ourselves all that we need for a cute little swing to hang off of your tree. And honestly, I love how the metal bits on the spruce trapdoor seem to blend in with the chains that we got here as well. It all just works so perfectly. This archway is entirely possible using no commands. And the reason for that is because rails don't break on trap doors when we flip them down. So we can make this design without using any structure voids or barrier blocks. Just have a rail up here, have the two ends point up to it, and then break the center so that they'll stay in place. It really is that easy. With a mix of carpet and wool blocks, we can lay out the perfect rug to have ourselves a picnic. And then by using pressure plates for the, well, plates, we can really make this look as if it's lived in. And for my money, the best part of this whole facade is using an invisible item frame to add in a little shovel for a spoon. Well, that's just perfect. If you place a trapdoor next to a slab, you notice that the hitbox is laid out in such a way that a trapdoor almost looks like a half-half slab in some way, or a quarter slab, I guess. And with that logic, if we place our spruce trapdoors next to our spruce half slabs, we get an extra gradual way to detail our builds, and one that from a distance, I think really sells the illusion that we're going for. We added gears to Minecraft, or rather, we added them back because they used to be in the game. And now, with a mix of copper stairs, we can create a number of different gear designs like this. And folks, there's so much variation here. You could use more stairs for a jagged one like this, or use less of them for one with more rounded edges. And whichever ones you choose, it's gonna work well to make your industrial base, well, industrial. Here's how you should use your grindstone in an enchantment room, since placing it like this is boring. But if we add this in, then it's not a grindstone, but instead a pet owl, which fits a lot more with the magical aesthetic of the room anyway. So if you're playing on a server with the player head data pack installed, take this as your sign to build yourself a headwig. It certainly looks better than the alternative. If we just line a couple of signs upward like this, then we can make that tower look like it's a fallen rope bridge. And while it might look silly from some angles, I think if you're looking at it dead on, this will definitely do the trick that you're going for. And honestly, I'm sad that there's no way to climb this, otherwise we'd have a hilarious huge ladder to put inside of our base. Minecraft banners don't show wear and tear, but we're about to add both of them in. By using gray patterns like this one on a gray wall of stone, we can make it look as if the banners were torn during a battle, which will help us tell the story of a more desecrated part of the castle. And since we can use even more muted colors for the dye, we can add those in and make it look as if the banner's fading with age.
much. In Bedrock Edition, trees are known to fall over, but in Java, not so much. So I guess that's our job, but we don't have to be boring about it. And by help of using the wood blocks instead of the logs, we can build ourselves a custom tree like this that seems to have toppled over in the forest, which I think is a great detail to have, especially if you have some kind of lumberjack shack nearby. Oh, and for the cherry on top, place a bee nest off to the side here, and it really looks like one toppled over. Walls and fences don't naturally connect like this, but if we were to use a debug stick, we could fix that easily. And then if you're willing to take the time, we get a much cleaner looking pattern. But I'd be remiss if I didn't mention that this does take a lot of time with a debug stick, so uh, clear your afternoon. This is an ice block, and these are icicles, or rather blue glass panes that we're gonna make look like icicles. Since by dyeing some glass light blue and hanging them underneath a bridge like so, you'll see that from a distance, these work perfectly as the icicles that developed underneath the overhang, especially when the light blue matches the color of the ice so perfectly. It's a nice touch for sure. Stop using item frames and instead use these signs. Since unlike those item frames, these aren't gonna lag out your game nearly as much. And by using different kinds of ASCII art like this user does here, it can still be quite effective. And plus you'll still have room to type out the actual label in case people can't decipher your abstract art. And for my money, I'd say this is a lot more creative than just putting a leather in between some sticks and doing it that way. And better yet, you could even dye the sign, offering up more variety than you maybe expected. How did we make this wheelbarrow in vanilla? Well, the answer is expensive to do. If you put an armor stand on an enchantment table for the right height, you can add in another right chest plate for the wheels, and then add in a minecart on top for the barrow, with finally a fence gate to finish off the handles. But again, expensive, so only do this in creative. Did you know that there's hay bale half slabs? Well, kind of, because if you get a far villager like this one and then tuck it underneath a slab or stair, it's possible that the hat on top actually blends in with the hay bale texture, which is pretty ridiculous, but if you have a villager breeder, I think it's more than worth a shot, because as we all know, nothing comes cheaper than villager labor. Just make sure you don't look too close at its eyes when it's begging for help. This tank might not be intimidating, but it sure is cool. And we built it all in vanilla. Since by mixing together anvils for the wheels and trap doors for the supports, we then have all we need to tuck a boat on top and a lightning rod at the front and make this into the perfect mini tank replica. Just don't expect to go anywhere very fast in it. With the help of glowing sacks and gray dye, we can make our signs look like they're screwed down to the wall. All we need to use is this Unicode symbol called the bullet point and we'll get that convincing round shape, which if we then type our text in the middle of the sign, it's gonna look a lot more important, and it should get your friends to pay attention to the message, so long as they don't dye it a different color. How do we get this fish inside of a block? Well, silly as it may seem, the answer is actually pretty cheap. All we have to use is a waterlogged chest, an item frame with a map, and then place a glass block over top. And if we follow the steps just like this user lays out, we'll be able to get our own tropical fish inside of our blue glass aquarium. Or rather, should I say a fish bowl? because at this point, it's pretty small. But I think that adds to the charm, and it's definitely worth building in your next base. By taking brick stairs and alternating them in a pattern like so, we have it in just a way where it looks like there's a brick missing from each of these steps. And I think that's just perfect. And not only is this a little funny thing to put in your world, but when mixed into a wall like this example, it actually adds some convincing depth. And when you zoom out, it might even leave some people wondering how you actually built it, which I think is true of all the great build hacks. With glowing item frames, we can make lights without using any redstone. Like this example, using a mix of glowing item frames with regular item frames for a traffic light. And this could work with either the invisible variant or even having the item frame frames visible when you build it in survival. And honestly, I think this could work even better if you used fully colored maps of green, yellow, and red, but that's gonna be a lot more expensive to place the 16,384 blocks needed instead of just the one block in an item frame. With a couple doors like this and trap doors placed horizontally, we're able to overlap these on top of our armor stands and get ourselves a very own functioning wardrobe. And while the armor that you place inside might be expensive, I guarantee you that the wood needed to build this wardrobe is nothing like that, giving you at worst a cool build, and at best, it might even help to hide some of that armor in case you need it. With the help of custom player heads, we have just what we need to make ourselves a replica of the Mars Rover. And by using one of them as a camera up top, this really does sell the illusion. And I think if you were to tuck one of these inside your next Mesa biome, that might be all you need to turn that red desert into the red planet, which is a lot cheaper than spending billions on a rocket to try and get there. Trust me. This might not look like a hot tub, but just wait. Since it's possible for campfires to emit smoke through a one block thick floor, we can place them underneath this and use the smokestack to stand into steam from the water. And the good news is that if you get too close to the heat of the campfires underneath, the water up top can still cool you off if you catch a blaze. With just a handful of wooden planks, we can craft together the pressure plates necessary to line the top of our fences and add a cool little railing to our build. Which in my eyes is such a simple solution that I'm amazed that I never thought of it. But after seeing this user's post, it's definitely something I'm going to add into all my builds. Just maybe don't put these wooden pressure plates next to the fences in your animal farm. Otherwise, all you're going to hear is clicking noises and then it won't seem like as good of an idea. Mud and wood might not seem like they go together 
together, but like this, I actually do. By just mixing in the new mangrove roots with the mud, we get the muddy mangrove roots that we need for a transition block. And that'll help us to blend in the trees that generate in our mangrove swamp, even better than the ones that spawn naturally. If you look closely, you'll notice that some Minecraft textures you don't expect to work together do it just perfectly. And such is the case when you put the target block next to the quartz pillar texture, since they both have these evenly spaced lines that blend together nicely. And that could give you some cool opportunities to use these for, not just for a target range, but maybe it's a way to mark a pillar for a secret as well. Or maybe it's graffiti, the choice is up to you. If you place two glass panes in a line like so, it makes for a convincing base for a modern looking table. And what I love most about this example is that this user used the lack of a texture to imply the T-shape for the legs of the table. Very clever. Here's how to make your table look expensive without actually spending that much. Since we're just four stairs facing into each other like this, we can line the top with trap doors, and there you go. We have a perfect table design without having to do any kind of complicated building. And from there, if you scatter around a few chairs, this will already be perfect enough to put on display. Though personally, I'd rather use birch trap doors instead of the oak ones that this user did, since those will blend better with the sandstone that we're using anyway. Instead of placing your food in an item frame, place it on a rack. Or rather, place it on an invisible item frame on top of that rack. Which in turn gets us this really cool effect of drying out our fish after we caught them. Which is a bit of extra effort, but it looks a lot better than just placing them inside of the barrel after you catch them. So, I'd say it's a trade-off. Here's how you can make your staircase look even better than it does, with no extra cost. Now, if you've got a two-wide staircase like this, just curve the one on the edge inward, and there you go, it has its very own railing. Which is a cheap way to make your staircase look even better. And honestly, it'll even look fine if it's just floating like this, which will also make it cheaper. Here's how to build the wither without actually building the wither. Since if we take after this user and mix together the right number of stairs and slabs, then we can carve out this perfect wither shape into your next wall. And then for an added bit of detail, mixing in something like chiseled nether brick, which has the wither skull texture in it, could work perfectly for the heads behind the wall. I mean, that's too good to pass up on. And it's a lot less destructive than the real thing. When it's laid out like so, these trap doors don't look like much. But as soon as we flip them up, you'll notice that this user gave us the design for some pretty neat trap door boxes to have in your base. And what I love most about these is that they don't all look the same, giving you some realistic variety to how the boxes play out. It's just learning that pattern's gonna be tough, but if you look at it with these birch trap doors, it becomes a lot more obvious what to do. Desert pyramids haven't changed a lot since they were added in, but we can fix that by adding in these hieroglyphics. By using a mix of red sandstone stairs and slabs for the different shapes, we can create some cool looking marks on our wall, like this ox, or even a person's silhouette. And if you're looking to go even further, use chiseled sandstone for a detailed face. That's going the extra mile. This is a pumpkin, this is a jack-o'-lantern, and this is my jack-o'-lantern nether portal. Which, taken after this user's post, we could take advantage of different orange colored blocks as is acacia and red sandstone to really detail our supersized squash. And then with a couple of drip stones for the teeth, I think this gets appropriately terrifying to house your next nether portal. I mean, it certainly looks a lot better than just putting a nether portal in the middle of a field, that's for sure. From here, this just looks like a smoker, but as soon as we add a lever on top, then it starts to look like an old television set. And granted, we might have to do what this user suggests and squint really hard to see it, but I think for a set piece in an old living room, this can definitely do the trick. Here we're gonna use levers and trap doors, but not how you'd think, since instead of flipping them open, we're gonna use those levers as a support, which if you step back to this view, looks very nice, almost as if we're using them to lift up the windowsill. And honestly, I think this would look great for any kind of shelves that you wanna put inside of the house as well. We can wait for this build hack to load in, but the truth is, it never will, because that's the whole point. And by mixing together an invisible item frame with a goat horn like this, we can use a command block that constantly constantly updates it so that it rotates and creates this loading screen animation that we see here. Which can be great for making your friends think they have a bad internet connection, or it might just be useful to have for the next time you set up a new map and you need something for the players to see while you get everything ready. And really, so few of the Minecraft textures are animated, so it's nice to see us make do where we can. By using a mix of furnaces that face outward and inward, we can make ourselves a sidewalk and the gutter to put inside, which I think is a really nice touch if you hide the front with a slab. And if you've got plenty of cobble from all the time that you spent down mining, I think this is finally a good use for it. When we step back here, this tunnel looks real, but as soon as we get up close, not so much. And the way we did that is because by using different shadings of blocks, we can get some pretty convincing depth. And if you ask me, that's an illusion good enough to fool Wile e. Coyote, let alone your friends. And if you're not a prankster, you could still use this technique to texture your build if you're limited for size, helping your walls seem more detailed than they actually are. Minecraft has glass bottles, but not like these ones. Though with the help of an armor stand, we're able to position our telescopes just right and make it look like we got spyglass bottles instead. And I 
think these would work perfect for a new bar. Especially because when we use armor stands, we're able to position them on different steps of the stair like this, making it look more like a shelf than anything else. And I think that's perfect. If you're making an aqueduct or a sewer in your base, then change out the regular cobblestone for mossy cobblestone and seagrass to make it look as if algae and plant bacteria are starting to build up within the rocks. Which not only adds a distinction between which blocks are underwater and which aren't, but it also adds some nice world building to your build, all without costing more than a little bit of bone meal to do. When you see lime terracotta, your first thought probably isn't lemonade, but when it's arranged like this, you'll reconsider. With this, we already have the perfect sign for a lemonade stand, and then we can use this trick with a gold helmet armor stand placed on five layers of snow and push a glass block over top for a jar of lemonade. Chandeliers are great, but expensive, but with the help of glow berries, we can do it for a lot cheaper, all without sacrificing the look inside. With a couple of these cave vines, we can hang them off our roof and then clip the ends so that they stay just right where we want them. And there you go, a chandelier for a light source, and we did it all without having to break the bank. I'd say both of those count for a win. As you'll notice, the cartography table has the same texture as the dark oak planks, which means that if we mix one of these cartography workstations into our table like so, it'll look as if we've placed different items on top of the table. And I think that's a really neat effect, especially if you don't have item frames on hand. Or really, even if you did have item frames, there's no way that you're putting three items in the same frame, so this is something special for sure. Infinite water sources are helpful, but ugly. But this should do the job well enough. It's a well. I don't know if that was clear. And here, it looks like just one block of water, but when you pull from the inside, it'll refill from the water sources that we hit on the stairs from the side, letting it look minimalistic without minimizing the function. This is not an end portal, but from a distance, it might trick you. And up close, it's still a pretty funny conversation starter to have. But just using the new skulk blocks, we have a texture that matches the void that we see out in the end. So if we line a three by three grid with a couple of end stone blocks and eyes of ender, you might have the perfect artificial piece to put on display in your next museum. By just adding in a few trap doors around a grass block, we get the perfect situation to add chains and have a hanging garden box. And the best part is that you can make this any size that you need it to be, which works great for your berry bushes, your flowers, or you can even detach flower pots like so for a smaller footprint, which obviously looks a lot better on your wall than just having some grass block floating there in the air. As Ion Pixel shows off, the red color of the mangrove wood lends perfectly to building yourself an airplane. And this example more than proves that. And then with some grindstones for the landing gear underneath, we have just what we need to put ourselves a mine cart up top and ride around in our newfound biplane. Though ride around is a funny way of saying it. Really, it's just riding in place. But as the original time lapse shows, even that looks pretty convincing after a while, especially when the clouds move in the background. Since the trapdoors that you get from the nether don't burn, we can use a crimson trapdoor like this to make a really nice furnace design. And if you wanted to, you could even flip open that trapdoor and toss in your ancient debris to get it actually smelted, since that won't burn in the lava that you tuck inside. Scaffolding is a great block, but it doesn't look much like actual scaffolding. So instead, we're gonna use campfires. Since when we extinguish our campfires and then add in ladders and trapdoors like this, it'll still be functional as scaffolding, but look a lot more believable to the actual thing. And at this point, this is the kind of scaffolding that you wouldn't mind leaving up after you finish the build. It looks that good. Campfires are great for smoke, but they don't offer a lot of that. So, enter the dead coral. By using these spaced out like so, we can make some pretty convincing clouds of smoke. And I think they look a lot more like smoke than the kind of cobwebs that we're used to. And better yet, you can even mix together the different kinds of coral to have different gradients to the smoke cloud. There's so much to do here, it's really just up to you to experiment with it. But if you're looking to take your chimney up to the next level, I think you'd be hard pressed to find something that works better than this. Stop building your chimneys like this, but instead do them like this. Since by adding in just a wall and a stone pressure plate, the smoke can still pass through the top and it'll make the campfire design look a lot more realistic. This carpet's bougie, but with one look, it's worth it. Especially since shulkers are now renewable as of recent updates. So we can use the spares that we get for this extra fancy carpet design. Just place your shulker boxes facing inward and you can have it in all the same colors that you would for a traditional carpet, making it an easy switch if you already have the funds. Getting mobs to cooperate for your builds is not an easy concept, but with the help of a cleverly placed stone brick wall here, then we can set up our display in such a way that when we push in our glass blocks using a piston, then even a mob as dangerous as a creeper will be kept in place. Granted, it will be stuck trying to bounce up and down to get over that fence, but that's a small price to pay when the alternative is it exploding and the whole build goes up in smoke. I'd much prefer this one. Whenever you build a farm, you're bound to have these little patches of water that are hanging around, and unfortunately, those break up the farmland texture. But instead, if we use dark oak slabs like this, we can waterlog them to hide that water, yet still hydrate all the crops around. And then, if you're looking for something even more to do with that slab, you could add on a scarecrow like this with a jack-o'-lantern face, now you got yourself a light source as well, which will solve two problems with one solution. If we tuck a villager into a minecart like this, its hat will still poke through the floor. So with enough slabs and a shepherd villager, we can make our very own moving Roomba that rides around your floor. And the funniest thing about this is that the villager can still pick up things like bread, carrots, and potatoes, so it'll help you clean up your food scraps after the fire 
five second roll. You're gonna have to zoom in to see this one, but that's kind of the point. Since by tucking a button inside an invisible item frame like this, we get the perfect amount of texture and detail to make ourselves beetles crawling on your oak log. And while they're admittedly a lot smaller than the spiders and bees that we already see in the game, let's be honest, I feel like this looks more realistic anyway. And if you built one of these with a glowing item frame, then you might just have a firefly on one of these logs as well, which is nice because they're not in the game otherwise. With a couple of honeycomb blocks for the base and some twisted vines for the stem, we can put together the perfect jumbo pineapples for our new farm. And then we can add in some other leaves around it to make it look more like a proper pineapple patch. And hey, if you're looking for a light source with this, shroom lights should also do the job. They look close enough to the honeycomb texture and they'll make sure that no mobs sprout up like weeds next to the rest of your farm. I never would have thought of this, but if you had a lectern facing a wall like this and then add leaves over top, then you've got yourself the perfect plant to put inside your house. And honestly, I love how simple this is for how weird of blocks it uses. But if it finally gives me a use for those jungle leaves, I'll gladly take a reason to put them out. Let's grow some tomatoes. Since if you think about it right, the rosebush plant actually starts to look like a tomato stalk. And with armor stands dropped into them like this, we can make it look even more as if the green of the bush grew on top of these wooden sticks, much like it does in a real tomato farm. This build hack is expensive, but it's worth trying. Since while it's more common to do paths over dirt, by using iron ore and raw iron blocks like so, we could do the same over our stone. And following this example, it can really start to look like something special. Just make sure that none of your greedy friends come by with a pickaxe. You're really giving up the goods here. With just a wooden shovel, we're gonna make your door look 10 times more realistic. Since by changing the grass that's underneath the door to a grass path, now it'll finally have that small gap underneath that'll make it look like a real door. Because at least in real life, if there's no gap underneath the door, it's not opening that much. So this will fix our ones in Minecraft, all while being insanely simple to do as well. The observer has a face texture, so we gotta put that to use. And I think this robot design is the perfect way to do that. With a blast furnace for the chest and an observer for the head, it looks like a convincingly steampunk robot. And the best part is that using that blast furnace, you can smell your items inside and give a nice effect to the robot to make it look like it's coal powered. And similarly, if you want it to look deactivated, just don't smelt anything inside. Simple as that. You might've seen this build recreating the entire universe in Minecraft, but here's how to do it yourself. Since with the help of glowing invisible item frames, we can mix together nether stars and skulk veins to have ourselves our very own piece of the cosmos right up in our ceiling. And then with magma blocks and frog lights for the sun, the whole thing really starts to come together, especially if you use something like shaders. The new mangrove trap doors from the 1.19 update work amazingly as wheels, and this wagon proves it. Since even though it's tough to get a proper circle in Minecraft, I think these are as close as we're gonna get without using Mr. Cat style commands. And then if we put these to use by making a wonderful wagon like this user design, I think this especially sells the illusion. And it's a lot better than some of the other things you can build with the trap door. Now you might not have seen it, but this block's called the structure block. And I know it has a weird texture, but we'll use that perfectly for our new sound system. After getting this block with the give command, we can stack two together like this on top of an anvil, and it'll look like we have ourselves a tower of speakers. So if you have the admin privileges to get the item, it's worth putting in your house as a flex. If you've got plenty of banners, then you have just what you need to make a couple of these ghosts that were designed by Gold Robin. And I love the little detail of having different facial expressions for each of the ghosts. And really, whether you use glass blocks to support these in the sky, or light sources so that they glow in the night, this build trick is just what you need to turn your house into a haunted one. And you do it all without needing a creepypasta. Instead of placing your bed on the floor, place it in the sky. With this user's hammock, we get the perfect thing for our new mangrove swamps. Or really, any place that has trees. Just put your bed on some trap doors, connect it using stairs, fence gates, and carpet, and the end result will be more than worth it for a good night's rest. If you mix in a couple of upside down barrels into your floor, then you'll notice that we get quite the pattern to spice up your spruce texture. Oh, and not to mention the fact that you'll be able to fill up all of them with some hidden storage space, which I guess gives us a literal way of tucking our money in between the floorboards. A nice touch for sure. Instead of using stone or andesite for your build, use both together. And what I mean by that is that if you were to add in patches of stone within your andesite floor like this, it'll create the illusion of broken floor tiles. And then it just looks like the concrete underneath is getting exposed, which I think is a good way to mix together these two blocks, especially considering you're gonna get a lot of both on your next mining trip. Might as well put it to use. With just a blue glass block and a tripwire hook, we can make this simple little water cooler for your office building. And while that alone should do the trick, if you wanna make the water in your water cooler even colder, let's use an ice block instead. Just as long as it doesn't melt from a nearby light source and spring a leak. If your base has a narrow floor plan, here's why you need trap doors. Since with a couple of these, we're able to separate our stairs from the floor above, but it won't make the room feel any smaller. And it also keeps anyone from accidentally falling into the staircase, which I think is also a benefit, at the very least for safety. And is it simple? Sure, but it's also effective, so I don't think that's a bad thing either. Here's how to turn your pistons from this into this. And the secret behind this isn't doing something like McMakestein's mod, even though that is cool, but instead, by just using the set block command with different parts of the piston, we can separate the head from the body and then place fence post lining in the middle. And 
there you have it, a giant piston. And if you really wanted to, you could even make this into the sticky variant as well. Just don't expect it to retract anything. There's no off switch for this one. Stairs aren't the only block that you can use as stairs. And this modern design proves that. With a mix of end rods for a light source and these carpet covered iron trap doors, we get a unique floating staircase that still makes sense. And while this looks great, the only thing you should keep in mind is that you can only walk up these seamlessly if you start first from an end rod. Because if you start from this block down here, you're gonna have to jump up at least the first step. With the way that banners sway back and forth, we're able to get a neat animation when we pair them with item frames. And you'll see that with these blinking lights. Now, surprising as it may seem, there's no command block trickery or redstone happening here, but rather the item just occasionally clips through the banner as it sways back and forth, and that'll give us the perfect thing to line your tunnel with. And if you wanna make the item frames invisible but you don't have access to commands, just make the backdrop out of birch planks too. And there you go, problem solved. This build act is a violation of the Geneva Convention. And now that I got your attention, let's talk about how we built it. Because luckily, what's actually happening here isn't as cool as it seems. But by tucking a villager into place in a cauldron and then using a dinner bone name tag, we can flip it upside down, but because it's a cauldron, it's not gonna drown inside that block. Not to mention the fact that that's not how the dinner bone name tag works anyway. And then with a couple of chains on top to keep it in place, we make it look as if it's hanging inside the pot. And even though, luckily, the villager's a paid actor and no one was harmed in the process. This escalator doesn't use any redstone, but instead we use looms because from afar the lines on the looms start to look like the ridges that you see on escalator steps. And if you add in a command block system like this, we can even make it functional with the teleport command. From afar, these might look like sea pickles, but zoom in close and it turns out that we actually use candles in the same place. But as you can see, these do work pretty well as the version of our own dead sea pickle. So if your aquarium happened to spring a leak and kill all of your coral, I think this is a nice touch to add in as well. Especially considering we can place as many candles in a one block space as we can see pickles. It's just too perfect to pass up on. If we fill in the gaps of our wall with the brick wall block, then those brick walls make it look as if the wall got damaged and the facade's starting to fade off. Which I think is a great touch. Not only does it add literal depth to the build, but it also adds depth in that it tells more of a story with it. Which is a lot to accomplish from just a couple of bricks on a wall, so I think this is a pretty good deal. Here's how to make a pool table. Since we're able to overlap carpet with signs, all we need to do is add green carpet to lay over an oak and spruce sign, and that'll make it look like a pool pool cue when you look at it from the top of the field, which I've got to say is much better than this old design of using grass blocks and signs around the edges. By just mixing a couple of crimson planks into the inside of a trapdoor barrel like so, we can make it look like we have our very own grape stomping barrel, which is not only useful for your next farm, but it might come in handy if you need any grapes at your next lemonade stand. And honestly, for how cheap this is to build, I don't see any reason not to put this next to your next vineyard. I mean, it's at least easier to come by than the purple core that people use. I think that's a definite plus. This is a melon, and this is a rotten melon, or it looks like that. Because by mixing together mud with our mangrove roots, we get the perfect block to look like a rotten melon. And then if we take after this user and use a wither rose here instead, then that'll also look like the decayed stem from the original melon plant, which could be a perfect way to add some new world building to your new farm, or to play a prank on your friend, whichever one happens first. This is my pet parrot, but it needs a cage. And since it's so small, it doesn't need a whole pen like regular animals, but it can also fly, so the fence isn't that helpful. Enter the scaffolding block. With a single scaffolding like this, it looks like a wooden bird cage, and it has just the right amount of room for a pair to sit snug inside. And even when they're in the cage, they'll still have plenty of room to dance when you put on the chirp music disc. Instead of a torch this size, why not try the supersized one? With the same materials that we'd use to craft a regular torch, we can make ourselves one of these campfire mega torches. And then if we add around signs around the perimeter, we've got something that's ready to be set up at your next base. So if you're looking for a design that's not going to break the bank, but also looks like you actually care about your build, I think this is a happy medium. We added a vertical slab to Minecraft. Well, kind of. Because funnily enough, if you just place two trap doors facing into each other and then flip them up, then it certainly looks like we've got ourselves a vertical slab here. And especially when you use something like the spruce trap door, the texture blends together perfectly and makes it look like an actual feature in the game. Which I guess it is, but just not in the way that Mojang intended it. And considering that they denied putting this feature in the game, this is really the closest we're gonna get. Cobwebs are annoying, but here they're essential. Because with just a trap door and a backboard, we have all we need to make ourselves a simple basketball hoop. And if you want, you can even pick up a piece of orange concrete and throw it through, and it'll fall right through the cobweb. Nothing but net. If we were to tuck this birch trap door into the corner, then you'll notice that the white inside of the texture makes it into a pretty great bed for your dog or your cat. And at that point, just add in an item frame with some food nearby, and I think this will make for the perfect spot for your pet pal to hang out. 
here's how to make your fire even hotter, or at least look like it is. Since while you could just do a fireplace with a regular fire source like this, by tucking magma blocks behind it, those will look like hot coals that are inside of the furnace. And that's one of those little details that when you put it into your build, it really proves you went the extra mile. Man, I think that's worth it. When you're in a hot climate like the desert of the Badlands biome, oak leaves really change their color, but that'll let us make them into tumbleweeds instead. Since if you were to just tuck a couple of these onto the ground, they do match pretty nicely with the dead bushes that we already got. And then you could use something like birch leaves or azalea leaves to match the actual texture that you're going for, giving you all the plants that you wanted, dead or alive. Don't worry, we didn't just drop steak on the ground, but instead, if we were to use steak and invisible item frames, we can make it look like muddy footprints on the dirt. Or you can make it look like someone tracked mud onto your white carpet. And you can even rotate them for an alternating pattern, which makes it even more believable. If you can't see the lights here, that's kind of the point. Since if we place these carpet layers in such a way on top of strings, then we can use that to hide the lighting from the top. And there you go, the light gray carpet matches the stone texture pretty well, and that way you don't have to see a distracting block of glowstone that takes away from the rest of your build. So if you're looking for a subtle way to keep monsters from spawning, I'd say this technique's worth a try. Since hanging roots can be waterlogged, if we combine pink glass with waterlogged hanging roots, we can place these in our ocean to make our very own jellyfish. And when viewed from the right angles, the direction of the roots even makes it look as if the jellyfish is swimming, which I think is just adorable. If you're planting sugarcane next to your crops, it doesn't always blend well. But if you mix in podzel next to your farmland, that texture will blend a lot nicer when you're placing it next to the water source. And that way we don't have that ugly dehydrated dirt look, distracting from what could have been a really pretty farm. And in my eyes, I'm glad this fixes that. Don't go near this composter. Well, I warned you. With a sticky piston and a slab, we can add in an armor stand like this and pop up any mob that we choose out of our composter. And then the real kicker is that if we fill in the composter with something like hay, all of that compost can completely hide the head inside. Or rather, it'll hide it until it's too late. This is a bed for me, and this is a bed for my son. Or it sure looks like that. Because by using some sneaky armor stands like this, we can shrink down our regular items to a much more manageable size. And we just that, we'll have ourselves a child-sized bed and a child-sized chest to keep all their items. Just don't try to open it up, then the illusion will fall apart. We might have built this out of mud, but these aren't mud blocks. Rather, by using brown mushroom blocks like this, we can mix it in as something of a smooth mud texture. And honestly, seeing this proof of concept, I'm amazed that smooth mud wasn't added in with the rest of the textures. Because seeing this, it really does look nice. Here's how to make a working cyborg in Minecraft. Because if we tuck an Elder Guardian in a place like this, its AI is just smart enough to follow you around with its eye giving us the perfect amount of creepiness for this working robot. Overall, making this Elder Guardian feel a lot more like one of the Guardians from Zelda. If we mix together the cherry wood with a crimson stem, then when you place them all on top of something like Nylium, you'll notice we have the perfect thing to go together to create a really cool infected tree stem. Though, I guess the only issue is that you couldn't build this in the actual nether, since this wood would still burn, but, you know, it's a dead tree. I guess that just makes it even deader. Now, I want to switch this over to a desert scene, since I want you to see just how well the cherry leaves can actually work in this biome. And by just switching out your sandy floor for a couple of cherry leaves, we have the perfect thing for a really natural looking carpet. And best yet is that the cherry leaves actually don't change with the desert color map, unlike regular leaves. I think you can see which one looks better. Now, one of the most versatile blocks that got added in this update is the new hanging sign. And while it's pretty costly, since to craft one of these, you need six of the stripped logs and two chains, you do get some really cool looks out of this. Starting with, if we just lay down some trapdoors like this, and then a hanging sign underneath both of these legs, we get a perfect little picnic table. And I think in a desert setting like this, the bamboo trapdoor one looks particularly particularly nice. Just, you know, make sure your friend doesn't come by and flip them up. It's not much of a table, you're really just taking an L. And while it's impossible to place these hanging signs by themselves, all we have to do is link them up to something like a trap door, and then we'll have the perfect thing for our little railroad crossing. Now granted, it doesn't lift, so it's more of a railroad stopping, but because those hanging signs have collisions, they actually give us a great way to make little railings for our bridges. I love that bamboo placing sound. And now here's a tip if you're in creative, if you do control and middle mouse button to do the pick block, that'll copy the NBT data, and now you can place it on whole row of these without having to type in the actual message, which gives us a great looking bridge and one that you can't fall off of. Both of those are appreciated. But what if we want to use our signs as, well, you know, signs? In that case, they actually work great mixing the hanging sign with the regular sign. All you have to do is place down two support blocks, your original sign on the bottom, and then a hanging sign over top, giving you seven lines of space to put together your perfect message. It just might be a little cropped if you type something on the top. Now, we've shown off this build hack in the past, but I actually think this is an even better implementation of it. You could use these hanging signs as a really convincing fallen bridge. And with the way that the chains actually connect these up, they have a collision box. I think this looks so much better than the sign design we've shown off in the past. But since I made this too small, it's really just more stopping you from going over the bridge. Though, given the state the bridge is in, that might be for the best. My actual personal favorite use of these hanging signs so far is if we do something like this user did here. First, we're gonna have to build up into the sky, and then with a couple of these iron trap doors as fans, we can place blinking lights at the 
the bottom. And finally, add in our hanging sign with the face design of your choice. And we got a little robot face. Just add in red dye and it's a lot more of an attack drone, which I would be angry too if someone came by and broke my buttons. Now, while it might be tough to track down the new armor trims, that doesn't mean that they're still not very useful for build hacks. So if you manage to get your hand on some of the Vex ones, then we can mix that together with our iron or netherite chest plates and get some really cool looking designs. Now what we want to do here is mix together the opposite color with each one. So the quartz with the netherite and the netherite with the iron, which when you put it together, gives you a perfect little suit and tie. And I mean, the invite said black tie optional, so I hope that means pants are optional too. And we're not the only ones that armor trims look great on. Since if you were to dye a leather cap red and then add that together with a coast armor trim and some quartz, then when we step inside and put this on top of an armor stand, if we drop that into place on three layers of snow, we could push a block in and now we got a little book on our floor. And the real test to see if it works is to put other bookshelves around it. And even then, I still think it holds up. Plus we didn't have to torture any librarian villagers like we did in the past for the same effect. It's a point for humanity as well. Well. And for another update on an old design we've done in the past, we're gonna make an even better floating lantern than we've done before. Since by taking a light in the center, adding some banners around the sides, then all we have to do is attach one of the new hanging signs underneath, and because we can angle these 45 degrees, we can add in little flags hanging down from our lantern. And at that point, you can add in as many or as few as you want them to be. They'll even look great at nighttime. And visible too, in case you want to tuck a hidden message above your friend's base. And speaking of a hidden message, probably the king of that is the new chiseled bookshelf. Now by itself, it doesn't really look like a bookshelf, it just looks like a shelf right right now. But if you lay out a few of these and start tucking in the books in the right places, you can actually use this as a form of pixel art. And while I wouldn't say it's exactly hidden when it's the only books placed in the case, if you add some other ones around it, then you can start to actually hide a message in here. Though if you build one of these, make sure you have a good leather farm, since just that little high message took me 34 of these books. Now with all the new types of bamboo that we have to play around with, such as the mosaic, the planks, and the actual stripped bamboo, it's a joy for building, and particularly in desert scenes. By just mixing these blocks together with some smooth sandstone like so we can get some really nice color palettes going on. And then you could even mix up the patterns like this, whether you're just doing something simple like a wall like this, or if you wanna go more out there with a pillar design like so, I think really any of these would work. And since with bamboo, we get ourselves a new wood type, that also means that we have a new bamboo pressure plate. But now if you were to do one of these, place down some raw fish and then a bamboo mat like so, you'll see that although it glitches out a bit, you got a perfect little sushi mat. Now in the past, we've recommended using hay bales for thatch roofs. And while they look great, they do have an ugly red band that goes around the side. And trust me, it's not usual for me to put ugly and red in the same sentence. But to fix that, if we use something like the new bamboo wood, then this not only looks a lot cleaner, but it also gives us stair and slab variants to mess around with. Plus different variants for the mosaic and the regular bamboo type. And at that point, the patterns can get really fun to play around with. Even if what I built kind of looks like a straw hat. Now, when bamboo was first released, the first thing that many fans noticed is that it looks a lot like spaghetti, especially the mosaic block. So why don't we just embrace it? Since with an invisible item frame and a mosaic block like this, we can again put a heavy weighted pressure plate over top and we got ourselves some spaghetti noodles. Now scaffolding can be an extremely useful block to use in your build, but useful and looking nice aren't always the same. Though with just a few of these bamboo trap doors, we can really take our scaffolding and make it into something that you're okay with leaving up after the build. And plus it'll still be functional. So even if your friend comes by and kicks out the bottom of the scaffolding, you'll still be safe on top of the actual bamboo. Now because of the way the strip bamboo has its different directions, if we add in a few to our street setting here, we can get ourselves some really cool looking paving to add to our road. Which I've got to say at this point, I I prefer over the path block. At least I'm able to ride a boat over these without getting stuck. Whereas path blocks, that one pixel gap is all it takes to ruin it for you. Or if you wanted to, you could take your strip bamboo and face it towards you like this. So then when we add detail to the front, it really starts to look like a window block. Now granted, you can't see through it, but that might be nice if you're trying to keep out passerby anyway. Now in the past, we might've compared pink wool to cotton candy, but if you look inside of the strip cherry wood, I actually think that's a much nicer texture. It's a lot smoother than the original, that's for sure. And then with an end rod as the stick, we can mix this together with a little cart and have a perfect cotton candy shop. And I think the pink wool looks a lot better as the awning than it ever did as the dessert. And with 1.20's new archaeology, we have plenty of these new decorated pots to, well, decorate with. I guess that much is obvious. And while you can't plant anything inside of these, they do only have a one block hitbox, despite what it might look like with this little lip here. So if you add on different kinds of pressure plates on top of them, we can get some cool trims or lids to our actual pot, which is way more than we've ever been able to do with the small one. And I think the one with the bamboo looks particularly nice here. Or you can bling it out with gold, but that seems a little excessive. Maybe if you want a gold chain on your urn, I don't know. And while it's still true that you can't plant anything inside of the decorated pots, if you add on a fence post like this and then some leaves out the top, then you not only got a plant inside of your pot, but it also fits it better than a regular sapling would. Seems a little teeny. Now, as this piglin's unfortunately gonna demonstrate, we cannot have piglins in the overworld, at least not for very long. But with the new piglin head that we can get through charged creepers, then if you have a zombified piglin that can pick up loot and give it the head, 
or should I say dispense the head on top of it, and we'll have ourselves our own piglet in the overworld. You just might also want to give it a golden chest plate so it covers up some of the entrails. <laughs> Honestly, I don't know what to do about the double ear situation on the side of its head, but at least it's only one side of its head, so maybe keep your pictures to its good side. And in the new cherry blossom biomes, you're gonna find a lot of these pink petals hanging around on the floor, which not only look great as is, but because we're able to put different amounts of them on the floor, we can also use these for some really convincing pixel art. And with how many you place down, you can basically change the line thickness too. So for all you digital artists, this is basically asking for you to create something cool, or at least cooler than whatever I was able to put together. Or if you wanna use these same flower petals a little bit more practically, then because we're able to skew how many are in a certain area, we can make some really cool looking curved path design. And for someone who hates building the traditional paths with variety like so, I would much rather just randomly place these down and have something cool come out of it. And come on, who doesn't wanna walk on flower petals? That just seems so romantic. I'm get, I'm single, so how do I know? Now, unlike in Zelda, these pots are actually pretty resilient and they don't fall, which weirdly enough means that we can use one of these to make ourselves a hot air balloon with a few chains connecting it up. And then of course the balloon part of your hot air balloon, place a candle perfectly in the hole and light it to fuel our hot air balloon. And then you can use a debug stick to connect these up to the pot. And there you go, ready for takeoff or stand still, whichever one you prefer, I guess. Now, while it's still true that we can only plant things inside of the regular flower pot, if we mix that together on top of our decorated pot like this, then it fits just right. The Extras match and we can still plant our bamboo inside. Or if you want nothing to do with plants, then it's worth mentioning that the decorated pots look great when placed on top of each other like this. Now you got yourself a great looking brick pillar. Or if you wanted to, you can use some mud brick walls on the inside. And when they connect up to the wall next to them, I think this could look great for some of the new rooms that you want to build. Plus you can add 20 different types of variety to the patterns that you add on top of these. It's either a decorator's fantasy or the worst nightmare. I'll let you choose. Now with the new seeds that we're able to get from the sniffer, when you plant them down, you notice that they start out looking great, but when they grow up, they look look like they're an avatar reject. Another way to fix this for our pitching pot is to place it down next to your potatoes and then place a string over top. So then no matter how much time or bone meal passes through it, it's never gonna grow up to be two blocks tall. And now you've got an overgrown potato to mix in with the rest of your patch. Just make sure you don't accidentally break the string while you're harvesting your other potatoes. Now there's so many things to do with armor trims that I'd be barely scratching the surface here. So let's rattle through a few of my favorites. And the first of those would be that if you took some of these new shaper armor trims and mixed it together with iron armor, then for the surprisingly high cost of the netherite, you could have yourself the perfect set of stormtrooper armor. And honestly, even without arms, I'm sure they're as good of shots as regular stormtroopers anyway. And if you do the same steps with lapis lazuli, and instead just use a snout trim on your chest plate, then just like that, you've also got yourself a set of Clone Wars armor. And we're not the only ones who get to use the new armor trim, since if we go down here and summon in a few mobs that can pick up loot, then you'll notice that sure enough, we can also kit these out in the different kind of armor trims as well, which might just be too costly to give them in survival, but for map makers, this can make for some really cool super mobs. If we take a set of red leather armor and then add an eye trim to the helmet as well as the boots. We can then also add a tide trim to our leggings and finally a wild armor trim to our chest plate until sure enough, we've officially given ourselves the full Iron Man treatment. And I mean, come on, doesn't that just look so cool? With the changes to bamboo, we also now have a new kind of bamboo boat or raft, I should say. And what makes this better than a regular boat is that if you were to place down enough snow layers like so, stacking up four high, then when you put the raft into place, you can cover up the rest of it with carpet like this so that when you sit in the raft, it looks like you're sitting on the carpet. Or in my case, it looks like I'm melting into the carpet. So maybe choose a different color. We're also not the only ones who can ride these things, which means that if you get it just right, we can now use these bamboo rafts as a new kind of mob display case. Or in the chicken's case, it doesn't seem like it likes it very much. So maybe it's more of a mob torture chamber. I don't think this is how they prefer their bamboo. Now, while it might get confusing trying to figure out which one's the bamboo mosaic and which one's the bamboo planks, you're gonna wanna learn the difference. Since when you put them together in a floor like this, you can start to make some really cool crisscross shapes in the pattern. Now you got yourself a perfect little bamboo mat or, or dance floor, I don't judge, but society does. <laughs> and that's not to say there isn't a use for the actual green bamboo as well. Since if you were to go over to a desert and mix this in with your regular cactus, then we can actually get a pretty convincing looking fake cactus here. And you can also plant little things on top of it, giving us cactus fruit. And at this point, I well prefer this over the competition. Sorry. All right, the next one I was told is a surprise, so. Up. Yep, still ate surprises. But unfortunately for all of us, these bamboo blocks look a little too close to faded yellow wallpaper. And what I'll also mention is that if you use some of the bamboo signs and don't type anything on top of them, then with the horizontal lines that they have on top, they look pretty good for vents. And now I'm just wondering how you're supposed to no clip out of the back rooms. <laughs> 
Oh, there you go. <laughs> now, I'm not normally someone who likes to build with a lot of birch in my builds, but with the advent of bamboo, you can actually mix the two of these together to where it looks like the birch is sort of a faded version of the bamboo. And at that point, it looks really nice. Just make sure that you get the pattern and amounts down right. But that only covers the build hacks that you're able to do with blocks. And 1.20 also added in new mobs, like the sniffer. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, this was too good to pass up on. I mean, come on, we've even got the little rascal and the tough golem in here, which is more than Mojang did in this update. Tough golem's even functional. But jokes aside, there actually is a use for the sniffer inside of this new update. You're just gonna have to use the right command. Since if you're playing in creative and you summon in a sniffer with the no AI tag, then you'll notice that you'll have this hmm. great bush texture to play around with. And a signature sniffer sticking out too. But if you cover that up with another sniffer, we can really start to layer these and get some pretty cool looking bushes. And if you add in this age tag like this, you can get a little baby sniffer as well. Just be careful, because if you place these a little bit too close to the floor, yeah, you might have a dead bush instead of a living one. Moving on. Now, archaeology is a huge part of this update, but the brush itself is actually a pretty nice texture to play around with. So much so that if you were to get yourself an armor stand, and then use something like the Vanilla Tweaks data pack to give it arms and pose it right, then we could give it a brush and some cobwebs, and essentially create our very own cleaning crew. Just don't expect them to work very fast. They're used to not doing much. Now, by itself, the new cherry saplings offer a lot of great pink blocks to play around with. You just might need to strip it down to its inside. But when you go to place down all these new pink blocks, you really just get something that looks like slime, and not the fun ones that gets you a lot of views on YouTube. I'm talking about the ones that they make chicken nuggets out of. And in that case, I think you should use a couple of quartz blocks to frame it up like so. Just with that little bit of white, it paints it together a lot nicer. And I think this can really do wonders if you use it on the roof. Or if you build it like I did, it just looks like a strawberry milk carton. I think that might be a plus, I don't know. But really, cherry wood isn't just good for our walls and roofs. You can also use it pretty well on your floor. And what I like to do is just take the lighter colored pink blocks that we have, and then get darker and darker as it goes out. Giving you both a floor, and a flower. And I really like the sound effects of placing these, but I don't like the sound effects of walking over it as much. Something about that scream of the strip crimson logs, it, it rubs me the wrong way. Or maybe we're rubbing it the wrong way. I guess it's fair. And now that we got this great looking floor, we've got to put something on top of it. You know, to hide that great looking floor. And to do that, this is where the bed comes into your bedroom. Now what I would do first here is lay down a couple of wool blocks for whatever sheets that you want, and then use a couple of snow blocks and snow layers for the pillows and mattress underneath. And while this doesn't seem very functional, as a bed, we'll get back to that. I want to do the frame first. Now pick whatever wood color that you want for the actual bed frame. I'm going to choose crimson just because I think it looks really nice with these pink sheets. And then with a couple of proper blocks laid out like this, for each of the posts we put a wall and then a fence on top so that it tapers off towards the top. Finally add on a roof and we look mostly done but there's one thing I wanted to get back to. Now if you were to take a couple of trap doors and lay them out, it also frames the bed but when you flip these down and break these blocks here, we can actually tuck a proper bed and then put carpets over top so that it doesn't look out of place and it's also usable as long as you flip down the trap door. And then for the final piece de resistance, which is French for piece of resistance, at least I think, <laughs> what we can do is put a couple of banners outlining this to give you some, hard to call them blackout curtains when there's not a single black color in sight. And then, here's the kicker, you can overlay the banners like this so then we get half colors as well. Add on to that the fact you're able to change up the banner designs too, there's a lot of customization here. It really depends on how you want your bedroom to look, or how much work you want to do before you fall asleep. I guess those are the two variables, huh? And that's not the only banners that we're going to use inside of your room. Since if we were to take white banners and add on all these things that you see here in the hot bar, then we can lay those out on our wall like this and frame it up just right to get ourselves a dresser. You just gotta place a couple of stairs facing into each other and then stack it up until eventually we have what actually looks like a dresser. For me personally, I like putting chiseled bookshelves in the background here. That way we not only have function with being able to store our curse of binding books, our most prized possession, but that also gives little sparks of color to this design as well. And then finally we can add in a flower pot with a cherry sapling like this and that way you'll be ready to, well, I guess get ready. The last bit of furniture that we're gonna put inside of your bedroom is this bookshelf shelf desk like this. Now again, you can use regular bookshelves or chisel bookshelves depending on how much crafting you want to do. Tuck those into the wall here, and then by using trap doors, we can give ourselves both the desk and the housing over top of it. And then finally, for the drawers on our desk, we'll just place down a couple of these stripped cherry wood logs facing outwards. Then with an invisible item frame, a crimson slab, and a fence over all that mess, it looks like little drawers. And that's not the last we're going to use of that invisible item frame. If you place it over the top of this trap door here, then we can add in an actual book, and that way our bookshelf desk 
rest could be complete. And yeah, of course we have to act in the cherry sapling over top. That's that piece of resistance I was talking about earlier. Our bedroom's not done yet though. I wanna add one last thing. And to do this, we're gonna need quite a few armor stands, but hear me out. Now, after making your banners with the specifications like this, what we're gonna do is pick out the spot in your room, put an enchanting table inside of the floor, and then build up a couple of guide blocks like this. We don't have to look pretty, they're guide blocks. We're gonna get rid of them. Since the whole point that we're building up here is so that we can drop armor stands right into position. But before we can drop them into position, we gotta move them into position. So angle your armor stand like this, use a piston to push it back this way, and then once again. And keep in mind when you do this, you have to break the piston and not the redstone block. Otherwise, the piston just retracts and brings the armor stand back to step one. But once you've done that and you got it inside of the corner, you can spleef the armor stand, and it'll drop into the corner, giving us the first of our legs for our plushie. And unfortunately, for us, the phrase first of means that we have to do this three more times to get it all right. We'll eventually be able to push in a stair block like this using the same piston. Add on your banner and it's got its little face. Yeah, I really like how this looks. And the reason that we didn't use a wool block for these white armor stands is because if you use anything that isn't transparent, the armor stands will just turn black in color, which I don't know, maybe that's something you want to do. In this case, it makes it look like a panda, which I also think is cute. And now that your bedroom's looking good, we can move on to the rest of the dream house. The quartz isn't the only block that works well with cherry wood. And really, you Using a couple of purple blocks, let's make for some great pillars if you want to divvy up your build. And personally, I think it looks really nice for framing your doorway. And the doorway wasn't the only one that was framed, all right? Stepping inside to the rest of the house, we're gonna keep that same purple and mix it together with terracotta. Since by placing glazed purple terracotta in a row like so, until you eventually have it laid up so that the arrows are pointing into each other, then when we lay over top of it with a couple of these slabs, that gives us a really fun wallpaper design to play around with inside of the house. And it also makes this block a lot more usable in builds, because with just the arrows alone, it wasn't cutting it for me. It just looked too much like the Team Rocket hideout. And you know, this seems like a good place for the kitchen, so let me lay a couple of those out here too. Starting with our oven. All we have to do to make this look good is place down a campfire, and then a temporary block with a rail over top, so that we can place our hopper minecart and then break it right into place on top of the campfire. After that, frame it with a couple of stairs on the side and a trapdoor in front, and that alone gives us a pretty good oven top. The hopper even looks like a cast iron pan on a stove, which I like a lot too. And if you really want to crank up the heat on the oven, you could break the block underneath the campfire and replace it with a hay bale. Next, we're going to build a couple of the kitchen chairs that we can have inside of the, you know, kitchen. And you might be wondering why I'm grabbing a name tag, but uh, trust me, it'll all come together pretty quick. What we need to do first is dig a hole in your kitchen floor, place down a chest, and then using a couple of guide blocks, we're going to uh, relocate a llama into its new home. And then with a dinner bone name tag, we can flip the llama so that its legs are sticking up. After that, we build up three more guide blocks and place two iron trap doors on the top parts of the blocks like this. And now we're gonna use a piston to push both of these into place. Push it once for the first set and then again so that the llama's uh, yeah, stuck in place. There's really no good way to say it. I'm just counting you all as accomplices for watching it this far. And then with a carpet over top of this, we can place down one last iron trap door and then give ourselves a debug stick to flip it up so that it's permanently in the right position. Until the end results that we have a pretty good looking modern kitchen chair inside of our build. You know, just one that squeaks a bit when you move it. And now let's move out of the kitchen into our living room. Since the first thing I want to get here is placing down these lecterns to build ourselves some drawers. Now, the lecterns aren't the drawers. That would be pretty disappointing pointing for how much they can store, but rather we're gonna overlay some shulker boxes over top of this, and then framing the whole thing with trap doors of your choice of color, we get ourselves 54 item slots worth of storage, and the drawers even open the right way too, which I think is really fun. And to make our living room into a place that we actually want to live in, I want to show you this new tool that I started messing around with. Now, without this Reddit post, I wouldn't have found out about this in the first place, so already credit to them, but there's this amazing tool called BD Studio that allows you to mess around with the new block displays that got added into the recent Minecraft updates, meaning we can make a cobblestone block look like this. Although I don't know why you would want to. But if you have any knowledge of 3D software, you can use this to make basically anything in Minecraft. And so with this command that I'm gonna put down in the description, if you put this inside of a command block, then we can press the button and get ourselves a fully formed couch made out of purple. And come on, the idea that this is in vanilla Minecraft, that, that blows my mind alone. But we can even make it functional too, since right now you just kind of phase through the couch, sinking between the cushions like lost change. But if we add in a couple of purple slabs underneath this, then you can also 
crouch on top of it. Oh, uh, par pardon my skin. I, I bought the ticket to the wrong movie. And that's not the last I want to use the block display command, but now that it's comfortable for us, I want to also make it comfortable for our pets. And the first step for doing that is the new pet bowl items that got added in in 1.20. Since by placing down the actual decorated pots that we got added into the game and then covering them over top with carpet, then the little lip sticks through and on ground level, this works great for a pet bowl for your new pup. And what's better yet is that you don't have to go searching for all the different shirt types and archeology span to make this. Doesn't matter how nice of a design is on the outside. You're not gonna be able to see it when you build it like this. But let's not just do something for our dogs. Our cats deserve a little bit of love too. And by just using a couple of these scaffolding blocks with slabs mixed in here so that they can climb up top, then adding in any kind of carpet or other little toys around, we've got a full cat palace play area for our cats to play around in. Just don't expect any thanks in return. Any cat owner will tell you that it's more of a mutual understanding than a show of affection. And now to finish up our living room, I wanna use this last block display command. Again, this will be in the description below, but using this glass block that we manipulate inside a BD studio, we can stretch it out and then lay a couple of trapdoors around the frame until we have a coffee table. And I've seen this done before with a retextured bed, but I just love that you're able to do this inside of vanilla. And if you want some furniture hacks that don't use block display, since that is an operator only command, no sweat, I wanna show you this too. Now by using a wall of your choice, we can use these as our actual walls and we can tuck in regular blocks inside until we get ourselves basically our own vertical slab blocks. And that could be great for the different kind of furniture that you wanna build. Whether that's using that with a couple of stair blocks to make yourself a couch, or just a couple of planks to make yourself the back of a chair. If you got room in your house, you should try it out. Not that you needed my blessing, but I am technically ordained in two states. I'll let you guess which ones. And now let's turn our sights from the floor of this living room up to the roof or what would be a roof if I had remembered to build it. But by starting off with a fence of your choice, we can then add in a chain and then an end rod, and then one more fence to build the base of the chandelier. Now we connect up that fence with a couple of fence gates like this, until eventually you have this crisscross shape, and then with a couple of fences laid into the corners, we can overlay the fence gates with trap doors, and then place some of our candles on top of the fence posts. Bam, a working chandelier. And one that's not too expensive with the blocks that we build it with. I mean, end rods are obviously late game, but you can also use a copper lightning rod here if you wanted to. I think that connects up pretty nicely as well. Or if you really just don't want to light up your build with that kind of floating chandelier, since with an outer roof, it's not really supported or safe. Then with just two stair blocks facing in like this, we can place down the dragon egg and a quartz pillar block like this until we eventually have ourselves a table lamp. Or if you don't want to use the dragon egg for obvious reasons, then to make a lava lamp, all you got to do is put a couple of flower pots on top of each other and then a cactus in the bottommost flower pot. Look, it's even got the little bubbles floating through the liquid. And now I want to take us outside to show how we're gonna light up out there as well. Now first you place down a wall and then three fence posts coming up on top of it, outline the sides with the trap doors and then flip them down so it connects right. We can add in a sea lantern, two more of these fence posts, and then trap doors and slabs on top. Until the end results that we got a pretty cool looking lamp post. I mean, these even look like the ones that are outside of the actual Barbie dream house that you can go to. All right, we've talked about a lot of pink so far, but that's been neglecting all the pink petals that we can use too. And while I've shown this off for pixel art in the past, I think this might be my favorite application so far. Now, see, you can place these pink petals in each of the different four corners of a block, and then stack them up like candles until there's four flowers inside of the block. And with that, we can get some really nice curved edges until eventually you have yourself a perfect looking heart right next to your build. So if you already placed your Minecraft beds next to that special someone, I guess this is the next step. And at this point, I don't know what's harder to find, a cherry blossom biome or a girlfriend. I guess both depend on how much Minecraft you play. <laughs> <laughs> and moving on. That's not the only last. God. That's not the last thing I want to do with cherry petals. Since with the cherry leaves that we're able to get from the cherry saplings, we can mix these together with our pink petals. We did a great looking gradient from pink to green, which is just begging to be used on a path design. And because we use moss in this example, that's also something that would work in every biome that you placed it in. And the same is true with azalea leaves, which we're going to use for our new flower bushes. Now, obviously there's a case for just using the flowering azalea leaves for this, but I think we could do even better. Since if you have some bookshelves, I, I know it sounds weird, follow me out, and then overlay our leaves on top of that, the way it works, the leaves actually cover all of that plank texture, meaning that we're just seeing the sparks of color that come through, making it look like flowers deep in a bush. And we don't have to just worry about placing flowers inside of this build, we can also put them on the outside too. Since with invisible item frames and sunflowers rotated like this, we can also get some external flowers as well. We're just a little limited on color for these ones. Unfortunately, all the other flowers that you place inside of the item frame don't look nearly as in place as the sunflowers do. So I hope you like yellow. And if you don't, then you could always take the 
the azalea bush saplings and mix those into the floor with a couple of grass blocks and moss blocks. And that'll basically give you a flower patch to play around with in the outside of your planes. And then for some of our extra flowers on top of this, if you take a spore blossom, you can't place it upside down or right side up, depending on which part of the flower you want to use. It has to be supported underneath something. But even just seeing the flower inside of an invisible item frame or an armor stand, if you use something like Vanilla Tweak's data pack, you can get some really nice looking flowers to decorate the rest of your flower patch. You even put it on top of a lily pad with the armor stand and basically have a pond flower. It just might be a pain to do all the commands here. Even sped up, this is gonna look terrible in the footage. Okay, I wanna show you why you shouldn't place your enchanting table inside of an enchanting room in your house. And instead, you should try it out in the surface. Since after laying out the basic parts of the enchanting room, like your bookshelves and your enchanting table, then we can take after what Big Gardener did here and use a mix of stone slabs and stairs for the pedestal for what's soon to be our owl statue. Now, first what we'll do is we'll use a couple of these acacia planks for the feet. And then with birch planks and stripped birch wood for the inside, we can use another acacia stair for the beak, turn in a couple of our birch stairs like this for the eyes, and after laying out a mix of dark oak trap doors with a couple of spruce trap doors, we'll have the wings and feathers ready for your actual owl. And you might be saying, how would this even fit inside of your dream house? And to that, I would ask you, what dream house wouldn't include this? We can even add in some chains and a lantern off this wing so that the owl is holding our light source. That's just so nice of it. How are you gonna say the owl's not worth it if it's holding the light? So I have a couple of other things that I wanna build outside of our dream house, like this swing set. Now to build the actual part of the swing bench, we're gonna use trap doors, but it's important to know that even though trap doors are visually flipped down, you're able to put rails on top of them. So if we place in some of those and then another trap door overhead, we can connect all the rails up top, even after we break the middle one and replace it with an anvil, those rails will still be angled up to the top part of our swing. And at that point, you can house it in whatever you'd like. The original build is an overhang over the swing set like this, but I, I think this could even look nice if you just built it hanging off of your house. Or crane over a death pit like this. And for the outdoor furniture that we can actually survive on top of, I want to take down a couple of these stairs like this for a bench, and then most importantly, add in a campfire with some signs around it, which I think does a lot to make the campfire look even better. I mean, without it, it just looks like something that you're using to temporarily. But just with this little change, it blends in pretty nice and still has its functionality too. Or if you don't want to cook up anything out in the open air, then let's make ourselves a picnic too. First, we're going to alternate our red and white wool blocks into the floor like this, and then place down a cake with a couple of trapdoors outlining it. The, the cake isn't trapped. What we're just going to do is we're going to flip them up, place one more trapdoor on top of the cake, and then use a jungle trapdoor on the top like this. Flip it open and it's a picnic box. All right, so we've made good progress with our dream house, but we can't forget about our dog's dream house too. Now, much in the same way that we did the plushes from earlier, what we're gonna do is place down an enchanting table so that they'll line up just right, and then use a couple of guide blocks like this to allow us to drop the armor stands right into position. Now, dye it whatever color you want. I just think that red's most iconic for a doghouse. And then after you use a piston with the same technique to push these into place, push one to this side, another to the other side, drop them on top, and then we push in two quartz slabs like this into the middle of it. Place on a banner with these specifications on the front like this. That'll give us a little doggy door for the doggy house. Though, come to think of it, I maybe should have gotten a dog before I decided to build the whole house. Um... Welcome home, Grover. Look, your collar even matches. Placing down a couple of nether brick fences into the corners like this. We can outline those fence posts in string, place stripes of green and white carpet over top, and then in the middle here, use a couple of iron trap doors connected between two walls and some white glass panes over top, giving us a proper ping pong table. And for the last of our armor stand hacks for this video, what we're gonna do is lay out a couple of slabs like this, then place down guide blocks so that we can push the armor stand right into place on either side of the slab. And once they're there, we're not done with pistons or the guide blocks. We're just gonna have to move them into this side so that our armor stands don't move out of the way. And then finally, we're gonna push a couple of these end rods into place, so then we have the rack for our barbell. And then to put on a couple of weights so you're not embarrassing yourself, you can use wither skull heads like this to line the outside. And now you got a weightlifting bench for either you or the Ken in your life. And speaking of Ken, the rest of our job for this video is beach. So we're gonna move over to this scene and start to build up the ways that we can hang out poolside next to our Malibu dream house. I guess unsurprisingly, the first thing you need is a pool. So with really just a couple of stairs waterlogged like this and slabs underneath, we can create whatever kind of pool shape that we want. And if you wanna turn it into a hot tub, dig a hole like this and then place down hay bales and campfires so that that smoke can go through the floor and look like steam inside of your hot tub. And next to that hot tub, we're gonna take a couple of fences, place an end rod on top, and then use a diorite wall inside of the inside here so that we can place our white 
banners along the outside, and that'll give us a poolside umbrella that's closed, because, you know, I'm trying to work on my tan. Yeah, unfortunately for both of us, this is just a sunburn. <laughs> but my soon-to-be melanoma aside, we're gonna build up the dock for the last thing that I want to add to our dream house. Now, while it'd be easy to just do this out of regular wooden planks, what I like particularly here is using stairs mixed in waterlogged, so then when you connect it up with railing like this, it looks a lot more like planks of wood that are floating on the ocean water. Now, grab whatever colorful concrete that you want of your choice. I'm choosing pink for obvious reasons. We're first gonna lay out eight of these blocks like this with a blast furnace at the back, and then by overlaying a mix of these quartz slabs like so, we'll have the base of what's soon to be our jet ski. Finally, a couple of polished black stone for our seat back here, one more quartz slab and some carpet for the front, and then with an anvil and some end rods coming out for the steering, we can add on this very last lever, and our jet ski's ready to both ski and jet over the ocean water. According to Mojang, they are considering adding a crab to the game, but we've already added one. By using acacia fence gates and red sandstone walls and slabs, we have enough orange blocks to already make our base. And then if we add in orange candles for the crab's eyes, the whole thing's done. Plus, it's not as dangerous as an actual crab, so feel free to get close and check it out. And with that, folks, YouTube thinks that you might like this video, so see if they're right and have a good one, all right?